Ephesians chapter 1. And I said 10, but actually we're not going to start in verse 10. That's my apologies. We're going to start in verse 17. Sorry, verse 15. Verse, I, I'm keeping you guys on your toes. Verse 15. It's right in front of me. I don't know why I'm telling you guys the wrong passage. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. It says, Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. Everybody say the Father of glory. The Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of his of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. Uh, if I needed to give this a title, I would title it the Father of Glory. The Father of Glory. Uh, we've already prayed, uh, and uh, I think sometimes we need to slow down and explain what we do. We don't pray for the Word. I know there's a lot of churches, they pray for, like, the Word. Uh, I grew up in a church where they would pray, God bless this Word. Amen. Uh, you can't bless the Word more than it's already blessed. <laughs> Amen. It says blessed as it's going to be. Uh, the reason we pray before uh, we get into the Word of God is because we understand that the issue is not with the Word. The issue is with the soil that the Word gets into. And so when we pray, we want God to ready the soil of our heart so that we're prepared to receive whatever God would have to speak for us so that it's not a wasted word. Amen. I don't want God's word to be wasted, not because the substance is inadequate, but the place in which the substance is going into is not prepared. So here's what I want us to do. I want you to set your Bibles down and we're going to pray for the substance of our heart. And we're going to ask God to make room for his word. Can you pray with me right now? Father, right now, in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the power that's in your word. God, I thank you that as your word begins to grow and germinate in believers, it produces the fruit of the spirit. It produces the gifts. It produces your power and authority. It changes lives, hearts, and minds. And today we receive of the fullness of that. I pray you would touch us today. God, speak with clarity. God, allow a spirit of revelation to move on us that would go beyond intellect, but God, that would speak to our souls and spirit, God, that it would have depth in where it lies. Father, I thank you today that your power is going to be shown in these altars and in these pews uh, as you work on us, as you grow us, as you move on us. And we won't fail to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. And can we do what is biblically appropriate? Can we just give him thanks in advance for what he's going to do? Come on, that's it. I heard a few of you guys, but can we do it all together? Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come on, let us exalt his name together. Come on. Come on, can you lift your voice and shout unto God with the voice of triumph? Come on, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his name. Come on, I want you to lift up a praise unto the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ephesus is, is one of my, one of my uh, I don't want to say my favorite book. Philippians would take that title, but uh, it's, a, it's a near book to me. Uh, some of it is just because the substance in Ephesus, uh, it's, 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 it's dense in theology, and there's not a lot of practice going on. Uh, you look at Corinthians, uh, there's, there's a lot of practical things that are explained in Corinthians. Uh, you look at, uh, 
Galatians. There's a lot of practical things that are explained in Galatians. Uh, some of that is because of uh, the people or the audience that Ephesus is being written to. Uh, Ephesus is being written to a church that oddly uh, has very little or uh, any pronounced issues at the time that this book is being written. As Paul is writing this letter, uh, he doesn't need to correct things like he does in other books. When he's writing to the church in Tessalonica. He doesn't need to address their hope when he's writing to the church in Romans. He doesn't need to address their love when he's writing to the church in Galatians. Uh, you know, he has to address their faith. Uh, Paul doesn't have to do any of that in the book of Ephes- uh, in the book of Ephesians uh, because the church is at a mature place. And this is even seen in how we start off our reading in verse 15 of chapter 1. In verse 15 of chapter 1, Paul says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love unto all the saints. Verse 16 says, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Paul saying, I have heard of the condition that you are in. This is a great gauge to tell uh, if you are sitting under the proper preacher. I know that's a little odd for a preacher to say that, but just bear with me. Uh, uh, What does your preacher rejoice in? Amen. If your preacher rejoices in bigger buildings, and there's nothing wrong with that, if he enjoys in better cars in the parking lot, which there's nothing wrong with that, if he enjoys in an increase in offerings, and again, there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, what what really uh, sets Paul aside as a shepherd and not a hireling is that Paul rejoices in their spiritual growth. Amen. We need to make sure that we prioritize voices that prioritize our spiritual growth. Now, I don't think I need to say it with this crowd, but it ought to be said nonetheless. Uh, You better be careful. The spiritual uh, voices that you engage outside of our church context. Uh, I I know in the day and age that we live in where uh, preaching is so accessible and it is to your benefit to consume the word of God as often as possible. But the the disadvantage is, is that hirelings or wolves don't present themselves in this place. They present themselves in this place. And I've seen a lot of people messed up because uh, this pulpit wasn't the only place where they were digesting the word of God, but they started listening to preachers and so-called prophets and so-called apostles uh, that really were none of those, but were wolves masking under ecclesial titles that sought to do them harm. Their priority was not their spiritual gain, but it was a following it was money. It was some type of material thing. It is right for me to say this. Guard who you allow to have influence in your spiritual life. Amen. Amen. I, don't just listen to anybody. I don't care if they call themselves a church. Amen. Praise God. Listen, I'm going to be gone about the whole month of August so I could just let it out. Praise God. Amen. You better be careful the people that you let speak into your voices. I don't care if their titles are nice and they preach good messages. Amen. There are wolves. I've learned there are wolves that your pastor can't strike because he can't see. Amen. I don't know. I feel like an evangelist tonight. Amen. But I'm going to act like I'm not home tonight. Praise God. You better be cautious about the voices that you let yourself consume, that preach doctrines that you don't agree with, that practice standards that you don't abide by. I'm not telling you that the only person you need to listen to needs to be recommended behind this pulpit, but be cautious of the influence that you let live in your spirit. Amen. Amen. Their priority better be your spiritual growth, not another following, not another life. We have too many preachers that have turned into CEOs for you to risk who you're listening to. Amen. I didn't plan on getting stuck here, but I'm going to stay here just another minute. You better be careful. Amen. Don't just follow the latest guy that's preaching the latest message. Man, in the day of Instagram reels where you can just scroll through and follow. You know, following used to be a difficult thing to do. All right, when you used to follow somebody, it actually used to cost you something. But in the day and age where it's so easy to follow people, be cautious who you follow. Amen. 
We'll move on. Praise God. Amen. So here it is. These are the two things that uh, Paul is rejoiced about because these are really the two aspects of a believer uh, that need to come together to express uh, spiritual maturity. He says, I have heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love unto all the saints. These are two halves of one whole called spiritual maturity. Everybody say two halves. You can't just have one of them. You have to have both of them. Amen. He said, I've heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is your vertical relationship. But then he said, I also heard about your love unto one another. That is your horizontal relationship. You can't have one right and have the other wrong and be complete. We have to have both right. Spiritual maturity is seen when our faith with Christ is right and our connection to the body is right. And I don't know why I'm saying this because y'all are here. So maybe there's somebody listening to this. This nonsense that you could be a part of a church that you never go to. Praise God. Praise God. Now I'm not going to look that direction because that might get shut down. But we're just going to plow along through. I'd really, I don't know what it is about me. So I had like seven requests not to step on toes, but just call me the toe stepper tonight. I'm just going to make my way. Amen. Amen. You have to be connected to the body. Amen. Amen. Church attendance is important. Man, it's, it's not something we do optionally. It's not something we do because we enjoy it. It is a part of our spiritual discipline that we gather together amen amen it is that's a, it is a spiritual discipline and unfortunately we want all spiritual disciplines to be palatable praise god hey man we try to make fasting fun you know how hard you got to try to make fasting fun hey man, I, trust me we've tried it hey amen it's difficult we try to make prayer fun listen prayer is not always fun and can i tell you this church attendance isn't always fun but it's necessary. Now, you guys are here, so you don't need to hear this. But whoever's listening to this, amen, amen. amen. we prioritize our connection to the body. Now, I'm going to walk through these verses that I've read because I do believe uh, that it is to our benefit. And we're going to kind of break this down a little bit. After Paul begins to thank them, he says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mentioning of you in my prayer. Everybody say prayer. Now I'm back on this and I don't know why I'm on this. I really don't. Amen. Your pastor is not somebody you follow online. It's somebody that prays for you. I really don't know. Well, I know why I'm on this and I'm trying to get off of it, but you better be careful who you call a spiritual leader because some of those jokers don't even know your name. They won't show up when you're at the hospital. I really don't know why I'm on this, but I'm going to stay right here. I'll be gone for a month. You'll recover. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. Nonetheless, he says, he says, I pray for you. And what, what we're going to read following this verse is going to be the, the prayer of the Apostle Paul for the church of Ephesus. Now, this is what this is what Paul desires to happen in the lives of the saints of Ephesus. He is praying this to God, and he's saying, I want to let you into the prayer that I'm praying for you. So the following verses are going to be, uh, it's going to be uh, us eavesdropping in to the prayer of Paul for the saints of Ephesus. And he starts it out this way, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the Father of glory, Amen. I love that. Amen. Paul has a way of, of condensing deep uh, and, 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 and substantive theological terms uh, together. He just kind of he kind of packs it in tight, uh, so tight that you might miss it if you just keep on reading. But he says, when I when I start my prayer off, uh, I'm, I'm letting you I'm letting you eavesdrop into what I say when I pray for you. Amen. When I take the time and I bend my knees in prayer, I want you to know what I'm saying when I pray for you. And this excites me because some. Sometimes I wish you would hear what your leader prays for you. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Your leader, when he begins to pray, when your pastor bends his knees and he prays for you, sometimes I wish you could hear that. So we have the privilege of doing that in this passage. And so when Paul begins to uh, allow them this opportunity, he says, here's what I pray. He says, the first thing I think, I I, I pray uh, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen, and the Father of glory. He says, when I pray, I pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the reason why he has to establish this is, is because he needs you to understand uh, who he is praying to before he establishes what he's praying about. Amen. Because he understands what I'm praying about is not as important as who I am praying to. Who I am talking to has just as much value as what I am saying. And so he has to remind them that when I go to pray, I'm not just praying uh, to some governor in some far place. I'm not praying to some friends in high or low places, but I'm praying to the Lord, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. Amen, 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 amen. The hardest thing as a preacher is to remind you and to remind ourselves who we're talking about. Amen. Amen. Because we get so used to getting together that he becomes common. But I want to elevate him a little bit tonight. When you pray, you don't pray to a God who has ears and cannot hear. But you pray to the creator of the universe, the Alpha, the Omega, the Mighty One. Amen. He said, hey, yeah. He said, the God of our Lord. Jesus Christ, amen, speaking to the Messiah that that God wrapped in flesh. He said, the supreme ruler, I'm talking about him. But then he says this thing that he really only says in Ephesus. He says, the father of glory. Amen, I love it. Amen. He says, when I pray, be very clear. Some of you have come in from pagan places. You've stepped into this thing called the church. Some of you don't know, know, you don't know much about God or maybe you've forgotten. So I want to recollect to you who I am referencing. He says, I pray to the father of glory. Amen. Amen. That word glory is the word doxa. Amen. Uh, it's the word where we get a, a, a doxology from, where we offer glory up to God. But 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 but, but that word glory uh, can easily be translated brightness. Amen. That's why John said uh, that no man has seen God at any time, uh, 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 but, uh, but, but he is the fullness, amen, of his glory or the fullness of his brightness. And so what Paul is establishing here, he says, when I I pray, I pray to the Father or the origin of brightness. He says, I want you to understand that when I bend my knees in prayer, what I do not have and what I cannot do, I go to the one who can do it for me. He is the origin of brightness. Can I tell you what that means? The closer I get to him, the brighter he becomes. Sometimes your world's not dark because God wants it to be. You just got to get close. Amen, 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 amen. So he's telling me, he said, listen, listen, when I go to pray, I pray, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father of glory, he's the Father of glory. That means glory comes from him. Brightness comes from him. He doesn't just have some brightness. He is brightness. He doesn't just talk about brightness. He is brightness. It is who he is. And, And when I pray to him, the great thing about this brightness is that John put it this way the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it now when you get to the father of glory the darkness in you has to bow to the brightness in him i want to remind you who we pray to amen amen the power was not in the person making the petition but who the petition was brought to amen the brightness is not in the preacher The brightness is not in the pew, but the brightness is in the Father. And so it doesn't matter if you got a Bible college degree or you have no degree. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter if you've been in church five years or you've been in church five minutes. Amen. When you connect yourself to the brightness, the brightness does not discriminate. The only qualification it needs is proximity. Amen. Amen. 
you just got to get close to the brightness. You say, Amen. Praise God. I got to move on. But I pray to the Father of brightness. Amen. Does it have some of it? He has all of it. He is brightness. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. When you walk on the earth and you see good things, that's all great and well. But I know where good things originate, where it comes from. It comes from the Father. Brightness. Amen. I got to move on. And so establishes who he's praying to. And he moves on. He says, I have really three, uh, uh, three preliminary requests that I've asked of God. He said that God may give unto you the spirit and revelation in the knowledge of him. I want to read this in the Amplified because this will make a little bit more sense. Now, y'all going to do what I did when I read it. I act like I understood what he was saying. Praise God. I had no clue. It sounded good. Amen. You know people that pray and they pray stuff that sounds real spiritual, but you have no clue what they're saying. I mean, that's what's happening right now. <laughs> he is literally praying. I have no clue. What, it's like, man, that is spiritual. Praise God. You ever, I, you ever just hear somebody pray like, wow, man, that was powerful. I don't know what the brother said, but it was powerful. Praise God. Amen. It's Thanksgiving. And dear Heavenly Father, thou gracious, thou that commandest all the places there above and then beneath. Just, man, just filling the Holy Ghost over the turkey. Just thank you, Jesus. Amen. But, 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 but I want to I help you. So the Amplified helps to bring this just a little bit closer. He says, for I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you. Everybody say grant you. This is, this is something he's going to give. He says that he may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Here's where the Amplified begins to commentate. It says, of insight into the mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. To put this all together, he said, I want you to know God better. Take all that spiritual language, boil it down, take out the stuff we don't understand. What Paul said is, I'm praying that you would know God better. He said, I want you to have wisdom and revelation so that you can know God better. Amen. He said, I, 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 want, you to, I want you to have this spirit rest upon you that I've been talking to God about so that you can know God better. He said, I'm praying all of this so you can know God better. Can I tell you this? If you gain wisdom and revelation and don't know God better, God didn't want it for you. The whole purpose of the spirit and revelation that Paul wanted to pray on them was so that they can know God better. Wisdom that does not bring you to knowing God better is wasted wisdom. It is vain wisdom and revelation. You don't need to know, you don't need to know uh, all, all the hidden uh, uh, Hebraic mysteries in the Old Testament and, and, and the genealogies and the interpretation of the names and what that lines up with some star that's supposed to, you don't got to know all of that. You just have to know God better. Can I just make this thing easy for you? Preaching is supposed to help you know God better. Amen. Not feel better. But know God better. <laughs> Not just be better, but know God better. He said, I'm praying that you would know God better. It's all about knowing God better. That's why we come to church. Now, don't get me wrong. I love, listen, this morning, Pastor was preaching. And when he preaches, it makes you feel good. Amen. Yeah, but, but, but beyond that, I want to know God better. Amen. That's why we come to church, because we want to know God better. That's why we show up to groups and Wednesday nights and Sunday a.m.s, and, and we got Bible studies and edge, just because we want to know God better. So, so I'm praying that you would know God better, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. Here's what I want to point out. The fact that he had to pray this for them, it's because they didn't have it. I know that's simple, but. That's what it is. He, he had to pray this over them because they didn't have it. So he said, I I'm praying that you would know God better. He's going to give them the why. So what he's wanting them to get, they did not have. Now here it is. 
They were complete Christians. They were mature Christians. Paul was pleased with them, but they still didn't have something. Can I encourage you to say, look, you're never done growing in Christ. We're, we're always growing and learning and going beyond. But can I also say to you, just because you're spiritually mature, that doesn't mean you can't learn something new. Praise God. And they got real quiet there. Listen, I'm... Amen. And so here it is. He established it. Uh, there's something that you want, I want you to have that you don't have. And so here's what he wants him to have. That What he wants him to have starts with the why. He says, I want you to know God better. But he says, here, here's why I need you to understand God better. He said, number one, that you may know him. He establishes the reality that the first thing that he wants to happen is that he wants them to know him. But he doesn't just leave it there. He says that you may know what is the hope of his calling. So we're going to break this down because the first thing that he wants them to know, the first thing, if you're writing this down, number one, he wants them to know the hope of his calling. I want you to see this because he does not say the hope of your calling. He says the hope of his calling. There's a lot of language that occurs in the church that, it's not antithetical to biblical teaching, but they can become stumbling blocks. We talk about your calling a lot, right? When you get in the church, what's your calling? What are you called to do? What do you, where are you called to go? Where are you called, called, called? You guys ever, well, I'm, I'm called to do that. You've never, I'm called to, nothing, that's not necessarily wrong. But Paul doesn't ask for them to know the hope of their calling. They want, he wants them to know the hope of his calling. Amen. So he establishes this, and I want us to look at this for a little bit. This word, the first thing that we have to get down is, is we have to get down the call and the hope that's attached to that. So the call is found in Romans chapter 1, verse 6. This is kind of plain. This is just Bible study night. Is this okay? Sunday night. Amen. We're just going to walk through the word a little bit. Romans chapter 1, verse 6. Romans chapter 1, verse 6. He says, oh, they're going to put it up. If they're slow on the draw, it's not them. I didn't give them this text. It says, amongst whom are you also the Called. Everybody say the called. Everybody say the called. Everybody say the called. Now listen, come on now. <laughs> Y'all know better than this. Everybody say the called. the called. That's a little better. Amen. Uh, among whom are you also the called of Jesus Christ to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. This is Romans chapter 1, verse 7. Uh, called to be saints. We get this messed up, you know. Well, I'm called to be a missionary. I'm called to be a prophetic intercessor. I'm called to be an apostle. I'm called to be, you know, all these deep things, you know, just lavish titles. Listen, I'm not going to argue or discuss it, but here's what I do know. You're called to be a saint. Number one, the first thing you're called to is to be a saint. We have to bring value back to the word saint again. It's, it's like we want to be everything else, but we've lost the value of being a saint. That word saint means to be set apart. It means to, it means to be, uh, to be, uh, to, to, to be, to be uh, removed from the rest. Uh, there has to be value in just being separate. God, first and foremost, has called you to be a saint. That, that is God's call on your life. If you ever have confusion on what God has called you to or what God has called you to be or what, God is, what God's call on your life is, I want to settle that for you tonight. Your call is to be a saint. That's what it is. I didn't say a church member. I said a saint. Your call is to be separated. It's to be lit. It's to be God's object of approval and of affection. That is your highest call is to be a saint. Amen. Can I say what I want to say? Can I say what I want to say? We, we have to be careful that we don't allow the movements of the world to corrupt the mentality of believers in the church. Okay. Uh, 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 I'm all right. Listen, I've, I've swallowed bigger cats. I'm not going to choke on the tail. Listen, praise God. Uh, 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 you know, feminism has entered in the church where, 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 where it's, it's, not, it's not good enough just to be a wife or a mom, right? You got to do more. You got to be more. 
for you to have value, you're just a wife, you're just a mom. And you know what? We've allowed that attitude to dictate how we see the bride. Is this all right? It's not good enough just to be the church. We got to be the church with the lights and we do this and we give this much. And we Listen, can I tell you from God's perspective, God is pleased with you being a saint. That is your call. Amen. It's not inferior. It's not less than. It's godly. Amen. Amen. If you do anything else, great. That's awesome. We respect that. We honor that. But you're good enough being a saint. Amen. Amen. Is that all right? If you can't say amen, say oh me. Praise God. So here it is. He said, you're called to be a saint. But he doesn't just say his call. He says the hope of his call. Now, there's a distinction between hope and faith. Are y'all with me tonight? It's quiet. Maybe it's because I'm, I'm going a little slower. I walked in. They said, are you going to preach? And I said, I don't know if you can call it that. I'm going to try to do a little bit less spitting and yelling. So, amen. Praise God. The hope of his call. So, I want us to understand this word hope is distinct from what we're used to when we talk about faith. When we talk about faith, that Greek word is pistis. Um, and we understand faith because faith is elaborated on fairly heavily and described very accurately within the context of Hebrews. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Okay, Faith deals with the present. It deals with the now. Okay, How we know this? Because the Bible says, by faith, Abraham. By faith, Noah. By faith, Moses. Faith allowed them to pull what God was saying to affect their now. Okay, It allowed them to move. That's why when you're faithful, you're consistently moving. Y'all with me? Okay. When you are full of faith, you can continue to move. Right? Moses was full of faith. That's why he could walk. Right? That's what, listen, don't, don't despise being faithful. When you show up often, you show up continuously, steadfastly, you are faithful. Hey, man, can I say this? Listen, I haven't preached in a while. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. I'm just, I'm jumping on everything. Praise God. Can I say this? We need to bring back a reverence of the elders in the church. I say that, yeah, you know, I, how much time I got? I'm all right, Pastor. Am I okay? Oh, uh, he'll, he'll clean this up. Praise God. I'm going to NYC with some of these young folks. I'm going to be all right. But anyways, listen, there's a mentality that has grasped us where, where, we, where we, push, we push our elderly in just, just some side aspect. But we need to honor those who have been faithful. They've been full of faith. Their faith isn't in demonstrated and how loud they are. It's demonstrated how many steps they've taken. They have been faithful. They've been full of faith. When you get up there, he's going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You were so full of faith, you lasted. I don't want to have sparks of faith. I want to be full of faith so I can be faithful. So that's faith. Faith affects the now. Faith gives you enough for right now. By faith, Abraham, he had, he had what he needed to move right now. Y'all hearing me? Okay, so that's faith. But hope is different. This Greek word hope, elpis, this, this, this word, it doesn't speak about the now, but it speaks about what's coming. Praise God. Praise God. So, so, so faith helps you right now. And these, you, you have to have this. This is why, this is why uh, if, if there's any trinity in the Bible, the only one is faith, hope, and love. These, these are subjects that Paul is constantly speaking and touching and talking about. Faith, hope, and love. Because you need all three for your spiritual maturity. We know a lot about faith. We know something about love. But we know very little bit about hope. Okay, We understand love. We understand faith. But hope is not what you need right now. Hope is what's coming. Praise God. Faith allows you to walk right now, but hope allows you to remind yourself, this isn't it for me. When you, you have to make sure that you don't lose hope. That's why, that's why the apostle Paul had to correct the church uh, in Thessalonians. He said, listen, we don't mourn or grieve like they all grieve. Because if we did not have hope, we'd be as most men, uh, we'd be of all men, the most miserable. When you have hope, it says, God, I thank you for what you're doing right now. But I believe uh, that one day it's going to be different. Amen. Amen. Faith says I can walk while my child is backslid, but I have hope. One day he's coming back. Amen. Faith said while my marriage is messed up, I can still walk in it. But one day it won't be like this. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. That's, that's, that's hope. Hope looks at what is happening. Praise God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hope says, listen, I got faith to walk in what's right now. I can walk in this room. Faith gives you the ability to walk in this room. But hope says, I don't always got to stay in this room. One day, this thing is going to change. Amen. They see a song in Crayol, and it says, one thing I know, uh, things have to change. Uh, it's not always going to be this way. And can I remind you, who are walking in pits or valleys or struggles, it won't always be like this. I want to give you hope today. One day, things will change. Amen. Everybody say hope. He said, what is the hope of his calling? He says, you need to have hope that because God said he would separate you, God's going to separate you. Amen. I love the way the Bible puts it. The Bible puts it this way. He says, and the God of hope in Romans. He says, may the God of hope, Romans 15, verse 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing. I love it. Amen. Amen. The the Bible actually never says, may the God of faith. Praise God. Amen. There's no way it really says that. May the God of love. Amen. God is love. But he says the God of hope, it's speaking of ownership. The one who has hope, amen. The one who can see beyond where you're at and what you're frustrated with. He said, may that God fill you with joy and peace. Why is he going to fill me with joy and peace? Because when I realize who holds my tomorrow, I can rest easy today in understanding it's going to change. It might not change when I want it to, but it won't always be this way. May the God of hope. You need to get your hope back. Amen. I need you to preach with me. Look at somebody. Tell them, get your hope back. Come on. Somebody I didn't say, look at somebody. Tell them, get your hope back. Amen. Don't despair. Have joy and peace because sooner or later, it might not be when you want, but sooner or later, it's going to turn in your face. May the God of hope. Amen. 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 You can walk with your chest out when you got hope. Amen. Amen. Put your square your shoulders up. I got hope. It's not always going to be the way it is right now. We're not always going to have what we have right now. This struggle isn't always going to have me right now. Amen. Hey, can I tell you, when you go throughout your week and you just feel like I can't make it, just look at the devil and tell him, I got hope. What you got? Amen. 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 I got hope. Amen. Things are going to change for me. But what do you have? I got hope. Amen. 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 Say, I have hope. Come on, say it. I have hope. hope. Say, may the God of hope. Amen. I I feel I got to stay there. Amen. I want to encourage you. It's not always, you're not always going to have this depression. Amen. Here's what's so awesome about hope. Hope is not something God has specifically told you, but it's something you know about God. And man, God might not have specifically told you he's going to get you out of it. But what you know is that God's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He didn't tell me, but I just know him. I have hope. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, I got to move, amen. And so here it is. Say, may the God of hope, amen, fill you with joy and peace. Amen. In Ephesus chapter 1, he says that you would know the hope of his calling. But he moves on from this. And so this is the why, that you may know the hope of his calling. Got to move forward here. Praise God, just stay with me one second. I got notes, I typically don't, but we're going to make this work. Sorry, number two. He says, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in all the saints? Amen. He says, number one, I want you to know the hope of his calling. I want you to realize who called you. Have hope in that. He said, but number two, what is the exceeding, sorry, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in all the saints? He says, I need you to understand The riches, but not just riches, the riches of his glory. Praise God. He said, I I need you to understand where these riches are. Because some of us got riches, we just don't got a lot of them. Praise God. (laughs) He said, I need you to understand the riches of his glory. Now, when you read this, you understand why he started off by calling God the father of glory. Amen. Amen. Because he's saying he just don't got a little bit of riches, but as much glory as he has. 
is as much riches as he has. And how much glory does he have? Well, he's the origin of glory. So he has all glory. Well, how much riches does he have? Because his glory determines his riches. And he has all glory. Well, he has all riches. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Amen. And I want you to see how he says it. He said the glory of his inheritance in all the saints. Praise God. Amen. Can I tell you where God has decided to store his glory? Amen. I heard there was a day and age. I don't know nothing about this, but I heard there was a day and age where people would hide money in mattresses. Praise God. All the millennials are saying, oh, Lord, why? That don't make no sense. Well, believe it or not, there was a day and age where you couldn't trust the bank the way we do now. And so you found a safe place, not only a safe place, a secure place, not only a secure place, a private place. Amen. So you could hide your riches. And God says, when I hide my riches, amen, I don't hide it in the heavenlies. Uh, I don't hide it beneath the earth, uh, but I hide it in my saints. Uh, can I tell you that God who has all glory and the God of glory who has inheritance because of that glory. So he has all riches because he has all glory. He had all of the glory and riches in you. And I want to remind you who you are today. You are a storehouse. You are a warehouse, amen, for the glory of God, that spirit of God. Can I tell you, when you get the Holy Ghost, you don't just talk in tongues, but it is just the glory of God that has rested in you. All his glory and all his riches are in you. Amen. You better know who you are tonight. Amen. Since you may know. The glory, Herod's of the saints, I got to move on, we're running out of time. Then he continues, what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his power? So the first thing he establishes is what is the hope of his call. That's what Jesus does in us. The second thing he establishes, what is the riches of his glory? That's what Jesus has for us. The last thing he establishes is what is the exceeding greatness of his power. That's what Jesus did for us. That's Calvary. But not just Calvary. Because unfortunately, we stop at the story of the gospel. At the death, the burial, and the resurrection. And we leave it there. But I'm so glad when he got up, he had somewhere to go. Just stay with me here for a little bit. And here's what he says, which he wrote in Christ, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him up from the dead. So death, everybody say death. Now y'all go talk tonight. Everybody say death. death. Praise God. Burial. Burial. Resurrection. Resurrection. And we stopped there. But after he got up, he did something. And this is where the story continues. He says, when he raised him from the dead, I want you to watch this. And set him at his own right hand in heavenly place. And here's what I love. He says, far above. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. You're going to miss it because Paul, Paul just said stuff. You know, the brother's just so smart. He just be talking. You don't know what the man's saying. But he says, far above. Amen. He says, he says I, I need you to give you, this is what we would call a comparison. Praise God. A comparison helps us to understand uh, a certain thing by comparing it to another thing. Amen. This is like if I tell you, you know, I have a bajillion dollars, you know, like I don't know what that means, but I know what a million dollars is because I, praise God, I know what a million dollars is, you know. And if I give you a comparison of what a billion is to a million, it helps you to understand what that thing is. And so Paul has to help you understand how high that God has established Jesus Christ after the death, after the burial, after the resurrection. He says he's established him far, everybody say far above. Now I got to say it the way I said it. Everybody say far above. Praise God, we're in Sunday school tonight. Amen. Kids church. Amen. He said, he said, far above all. And here's what I like. He had to list it out. He said, far above principalities, far above powers, far above might, far above dominion. I'm going to help you understand this. He says, far above principalities. That is a position of power. He says, far above power. That could be translated authority or uh, the expression of authority. Far above might. That means strength or power. Far above dominion. 
dominion. That means kingdom far above every name. That is name. That is a person. But he doesn't stop there. He says not only, I love it, not only in this world, but also in the world that's to come. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. He said, I need you to understand when God went through the process of the death, the burial and the resurrection, he didn't stop there. He then took him and then he sent him far above all powers and principalities and dominions and every name, not only in this earth, but in the earth to come. So here's how I want you to understand. I want you to say or think about the greatest thing in your life that you've ever faced. You got it? He's far above that. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. He said, you, you, you can't understand how great God is. And so here's the beautiful thing about God is that God takes those things that we hate and he turns it around for our good. God uses the depth of your lows to help you understand his height. The greatest thing that you're facing right now, God said, I'm far above it. Think about the greatest trial you've ever been through. I'm far above it. The greatest sickness you've ever had. I'm far above. You serve a God who is far above. Amen. 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 I got to remind you, I'm praying this prayer. So that you would get this, so that you would understand who I'm talking about. Can I tell you, there's times we have things we don't even know what we have. So I need you to understand this. Think about this. Jesus walks with the death, the burial, the resurrection. But Paul says it doesn't stop there. He said, then God sets him at the right hand of God, far above all principalities. We're asked to go through the death the burial, the resurrection. We understand that to be repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. So if that was Jesus' process, wouldn't it be ours that we would have that final process that God would set us above? Well, I want to show you this is what happens, and I'm going to conclude. Just give me five more minutes, and I'm done. In verse 22, and he says, have put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. Did you guys just hear what I just said? Did you really get what I just said? I want you to hear this. And have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. Here's what I want you to understand. I want you to get that thing back in your mind. The thing you're struggling with, the thing you're fighting through, the issue that you're, you're dealing with, addictions, problems, marriage. Just think about whatever it is, heartbreak. Just think about it. Just think about it. And I just need you to ask you, is that on the same level as God? Can I just, just respond to me? Is that on the same level as God? No. Some of y'all are thinking like, no, it's not on the same level as God. But here's what he said. He said, God is, because God is far, but we believe that God is far above all that stuff. But then he said, he didn't just do it for him. But he put it under his feet, which is the body. So if you're in the body, and the body is far above all those things, then that would mean you're far above all those things. Does that make sense? I mean, unless God has a discombobulated body, his head separate, you know. If he's far above those things, and I'm not saying this is what Paul said. This would make sense, death, burial, resurrection, and then establishment on the throne. If that's what happened to Jesus, then what happens to us? Death, burial, resurrection. And he, Paul says, listen, he's established far above all things, but not just the head. But he said, listen, his whole body. And here's what the Bible says. He has put all things under his feet. If you're the body and all things are under his feet and you're his body, all things are under you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. There's some things that you've allowed the enemy to convince you that you and it are on the same level. Praise God. 
praise God. Addiction doesn't function on my level because God has set me far above it. Amen. Amen. Marital issues don't function on my level because God has set me far far above it and he had to establish this watch this he said i want to be very clear he said principalities powers mites uh, and everything that can be named i love the fact that he included kingdoms because kingdoms are places of government so any place you can name god said i put the body far above it so deland can i remind you we're far above addiction in deland we're far above a dysfunction in deltona we're far we are far above Praise God. Praise God. Come on, clap your hands if you believe that. My voice is given out, but I just want you to clap your hands. If... Praise, God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, just a little bit longer. I feel like I'm connecting to the message that was preached this morning. When you remind yourself who God is, you're reminded who you are because he's far above. Stand to your feet, please. Hey, man, he's far above. And here's what's so powerful. Because he is far. This is why hell doesn't want you to praise God. Hey, man, now I'm not one of these preachers that says praise every other 15 words. Hey, man, praise, praise, praise. I'm not. But there is a place for praise because praise reminds you of God's position. Hey, Amen. Praise reminds you of God's position. And because you get reminded of God's position. You get reminded of your position. You start thinking about it. Can sickness take out God? No. So sickness can't take me out. But preacher, I know, I know people have died from sickness. <laughs> I know you do. But here's what I love what Paul said. He said, on this earth and the next. So if it takes you out here, it can't take you out over there. Amen. Praise God. Because you're far above. <laughs> Amen. 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 I want to stir your faith. We don't praise God because it's cute and because it's not. But preacher, you don't understand. I know Christians that have been divorced, but God's so powerful with the enemy made for evil. God will turn it into your good and put you far above. Amen, 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 amen. I got to stir you tonight because when you get home, I was in the car. Musicians, you can come. Singers, if you can come. Amen. I was in the car just the other day. Amen. This was last week, and, and I was just thinking about some stuff that I just, uh, it, would, it just was making me anxious, and believe it or not, preachers get anxious, and I was just anxious, and I mean, I really was, and I even talked to my wife about it. I was so bothered about it. Praise God, and I got a phone call, and that one phone call, something I had been concerned about for weeks, God fixed it in just a snap of his fingers. Amen. And I got off the, call, got off the phone call. And I was in the car. And if you'd ever had one of these moments, I'm encouraging you to have one of these moments. If y'all could, could do that song, Great Are You, Lord, if you guys could just do that for me, please. Uh, I was in the car, and I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I didn't know how to act. But if you've never had one of these moments, you need to have one of these moments. It's those moments where you're shouting in your car, but people don't understand what you're doing. You ever had one of those, where you're just worshiping in your car? And the person next to you just kind of pulls up and he's like, you know, what in the world is that brother doing? I mean, I mean, I had me a fit. It had been a while. I mean, I'm talking about banging on the steering wheels, talking in tugs, praise God. Amen. And I knew the person next to me thought I was going to get out the car and fight them. So they just hit the gas when the light turned green. Praise God. But I was just so excited because I didn't know how to say it and I didn't know what to say. And in the best way I could, I just yelled out loud, hell, you can't be God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I had to remind myself, <laughs> you can't be God. <laughs> Can I remind you tonight, hell can't be God. Uh, I just started to laugh and dance and shout because I reminded myself you can't be and because you can't be God you can't be me because I'm far above oh. uh, when it happened when it happened 
I just put in my spirit. I said, I got to get to the church. I got to get to the church Sunday night because I got to remind the church because they're going through life. They got businesses that aren't going the way they're supposed to. They got marriages that are struggling. They got legal issues that we don't know anything about. They got kids problems. They're mourning and grieving over losses. Their marriages have fallen apart. And I got to remind them, I'm not concerned about your problem. I just need to tell you one thing. Despite the backsliding kids, despite the family marriage, despite your struggles, despite the lack of income, despite the downward spiral of your business, you can't be God. You can't beat him. You can't beat him. Try all you want, hell. You can't be God. I had to come all the way to POD to remind the family that's been thinking, should we throw in the towel? Should we quit? Should we stop? Is it worth it all? The kids don't even want to do this anymore. Don't worry about that. You just stick it through because there's one thing that will remain the same. He will always be far above. Just give it some time. He'll place himself. He'll place himself far. I want you to lift your hands all across the building right now. Come on, I want you to lift your hands and lift your voice all across the building right now. There's a spirit of hope. There's a spirit of hope, not just faith, but hope. Come on, Deltona, you can't beat God. Come on, Pearson, you can't beat God. Delan, you can't beat God. He's far above. Amen, come on. I want you to make your way down to this altar. God's about to renew somebody's hope right now. Come on, all across the building. Don't just watch me come down praying. God's about to renew your hope. Come on. I want you to make your way down. Come down praying right now. Come on. Come on. Bring your broken marriage. Bring your sickness. Bring your legal issues. Bring your trouble. And remind it, you're under my feet. You're under my feet. You can't beat God. You can't beat God. You're under my feet. You're under. You can't beat. you to lift your voice right now do you know who you serve mama do you know who you serve daddy do you know who you serve young man come on he's still great he's still great he's far Oh, we pour out. 